patient came in today with uh, intracranial hypertension, also pseudotumor cerebri diagnosis previously. Um, she complains of headaches in, at the base of the skull, headaches uh, in the frontal sinus region, kind of above the eyes and behind the eyes. A uh, major area where she feels it is uh, above the left eye. Uh, she notices that if she presses against it, it kind of feels a little better temporarily, but then gets worse again. Um, goes back to normal. She's had a couple lumbar punctures, uh, both normal. They've uh, done multiple MRIs, CT scans, um, noted, no, noted a little bit of uh, left transverse sinus uh, abnormality, but nothing major. Um, might affect that to some degree. Uh, patient is <clears throat> overweight, which is common with the pseudotumor, pseudotumor cerebri diagnosis. Uh, younger, female, um, very common with pseudotumor cerebri diagnosis. What we were able to find is that due to the patient's potentially weight, but uh, for whatever reason, her posture is very anteriorly oriented where her uh, head goes, her neck goes forward, her shoulders round forward, increasing a hyperkyphosis in the upper part of the back or increased curvature, causing the head to extend excessively, uh, compressing at the base of the skull, which will decrease um, the space for the blood vessels and nerves to go through that are going coming from the base of the skull outside of the head and through the spine to the rest of the head. <clears throat> okay. So if they're compressed here, what's going to happen is they're going to have problems in the end organs or wherever they happen to um, travel towards. Uh, in this case, you know, she's seeing more of an issue, we're seeing more of an issue on the left occipital region, uh, very, very tight back there, can hardly move her neck uh, in that plane of motion. So that's going to compress when those muscles tighten and irritate, uh, expand those blood vessels in the anterior aspects, causing uh, a lot of headaches and potential um, you know, migraines or whatever she's experiencing at the time. Uh, the other thing we notice is that because of that uh, poor posture, she has very limited breathing expansion. Her ribs cannot expand when she breathes. When she breathes, her ribs don't expand. She, her shoulders and, and neck go up. So when I measured her rib expansion, it was only half an inch. should be at least about two inches for someone of her um, body size. Um, so that's a huge input. The, the decreased oxygen and the lack of rib expansion is causing constant torsion on the neck as she breathes all day using accessory muscles. She's noticing that um, she's going to get pulling on the neck and head all day long um, because she's going to be breathing at least 12 to 16 times a minute, uh, potentially more if uh, she's decreased, she has that much uh, decreased rib expansion, decreasing oxygen. Another thing we notice with her is that I'm seeing an increased uh, postal uh, symptom in the ethmoidal artery here. So I can feel that the pulse is greater or there's a differential between pulses in the arteries. So I know there's some kind of blood flow issue in the uh, cranium. Um, you know, it's kind of like what I just explained before, but because of the decreased constant compression here, we're going to see decreased blood flow on this left side, which is what I was seeing. However, um, in times of headaches and uh, you know, spasm of the blood vessels, they will expand and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, constrict, which will create you know, uh, almost, in essence, seems like more blood flow, but it's actually less. Um, it's trying to get more oxygen to the brain and to the head. Uh, her prognosis is actually pretty good. She's been having these since 1999. Um, I don't see any reason why we can't rehabilitate her given the amount of time uh, we need, which is uh, with her approximately three months. Uh, we should start to notice improvements in headaches after the first month. Uh, but what we need is we need to increase that posture, rehabilitate the brain mechanism, the postural mechanism, cerebellum, vestibular, cortical, that all control normal posture and head position and space uh, in order for her spine and scalp to rele release the pressure uh, on those blood vessels and nerves. So her, her treatment plan will be adjustments, muscular therapy, uh, balance coordination retraining, but a lot of postural and brain retraining to uh, get her back to a normal biomechanics uh, where she doesn't have that hyperkyphosis in the spine. She doesn't have that severe extension um, in her brain and spine are basically working together in the same plane. Um, extremely important. Most times with these kinds of people, the reason they have these issues is because their brain and their spine start to disconnect a bit. Not 
literally, but I mean communication-wise. So therefore, the muscles, the, the nerves, uh, the joints, they're just not matched up with what the brain should have it doing. Uh, and therefore, the brain starts to get garbage information up. It doesn't understand what's going on, therefore cannot control the right way. So she should do very well. Uh, we're looking for a good to excellent prognosis. Uh, we'll get back to you in three months.